Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about how to pass your driver's test in the winter time in the snow and the ice, which is actually going to be a little bit easier than it is in the summertime. Stick around. We'll be right back with that information. Hi there, Smart Drivers. Welcome back. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about winter driving. Katie's here. Pramod is here and Arun and Arun I'm gonna I'll give you some information about passing your license in the ice and snow in the winter time and the reality is, is that 80% of the time in the winter time when you do your driver's test there isn't gonna be ice and snow on the road anyway the roads are gonna be clear and everything is gonna be fine so uh, you know that's the reality of the situation and the other the other point that I want to make is that most people who take some form of driver education, whether you come on here and you watch my channel and you get the knowledge that you need to be able to pass your driver's test, you know, it's in the high 90s of people who are successful on a driver's test. Unfortunately, there are too many negative channels out there about, oh, you're going to fail and you're going to fail and you're going to do this. That's not the truth. That's not the reality. If you do the work, you put in the work, you practice driving, you get some instruction about how to do your driver's test. Uh, you're going to be fine and you're going to pass your driver's test. So quite a few people here. Margaret's here. Hi there. Uh, Arun, <clears throat> Jessica, Joseph, Josephine, sorry, Jessica. Uh, tips on merging on the highway. Yeah, we'll talk about that. And Corey should be here so shortly. Uh, and Samson, you failed your driver's test twice now. Okay, did they give you a reason why you failed your driver's test? And John is here. Hello. Okay, so basically the way it goes here, I'll do a little presentation, take about 12 or 15 minutes. Uh, shouldn't even take that long, actually. And then the remainder of the live stream will spend answering questions that you have about uh, passing a driver's test, any questions you have, and those types of things. So Corey is here, Bricks for Wheels. Corey is the moderator and really awesome at getting up videos for us. Salim, uh, North Dakota, awesome. Um, Jaden, you're going to become a law enforcement officer. I have my exercise and often practice my handwriting for a police report. That's awesome. Good. That's that's really great, Jaden. I'm happy to hear that you're moving forward. That's awesome. So let's get over to the presentation here. There we go. All right. So winter winter learning, learning to drive in the winter time. Uh, there's a lot of good reasons why you should learn to drive in the winter time. Uh, you're going to be able to be a better smarter driver overall because you're going to learn right off the you know right off the hop kind of thing how to pass your driver's test and not only that but you're going to learn some skills about when you have compromised traction in the winter time so that's the other thing that we suggest that you do all right so those of you who may be new to smart drive test my name's rick august i was a long haul truck driver in the 1990s running freight from ontario canada into the united states just mostly east of the mississippi but i did make it out west a couple of times I uh, became a licensed commercial driving instructor in 1997. Uh, 2006, I graduated with my doctorate in uh, legal history from the University of Melbourne in Australia. And legal history, which uh, some of you may or may not know, is the study of policing, courts, and prisons. And my expertise is in policing as it relates to traffic. Uh, while I was going to university in Australia, I drove buses for Greyhound, so I have some experience in driving buses as well as driving trucks too. So, well-rounded there. All right, new video this week, Rough and Ramming. It's a video about the second lesson that you should be doing after you get a little bit comfortable with the car, the vehicle, and you're learning how to drive. Just go down to the parking lot, get some pylons, set them up, and you know, be a little aggressive on the parking, uh, on the brake, the steering wheel, and the throttle. So that way, if you get into trouble when you're out on the road and those types of things, you can you know what the car is going to do when you get into an aggressive situation when you hammer on the brakes and those types of things so that'll be really good for you so have a look at that video as well all right slipping and sliding learn how to drive in adverse weather conditions better mastery of the primary controls you're going to know what the vehicle is going to do when it oversteers when the back end of the vehicle starts to come around or it understeers when you turn the steering wheel and nothing happens the vehicle continues to go straight uh, and you're going to understand traction better so one of the biggest mistakes that i see people do in the winter time when they drive is that they try to break when the steering wheel <laughs> is turned and you're going to find out that the vehicle will not turn it will not break and turn at the same time in the winter time so you got to choose one or the other those two things have to be separate actions in the winter time so 
learn to drive in the winter time and you're gonna understand these other things better. And as I said in the introduction, there's too many negative websites out there. There's too much false information that students are getting. They're getting that they're gonna fail their driver's test. They're already nervous about their driver's test and those types of things. The reality is, is that you're not gonna fail your driver's test. If you get some form of education, you spend some time here on my channel watching the videos and those types of things, you're go there's a very high likelihood that you're going to be successful on your test. The other thing that I said is, is that it's unlikely that you're going to do your test in snow and ice. If, it's, if the conditions are bad, the, uh, the examination office is simply just gonna, they're gonna postpone the test. They will not take you out in a blizzard. That's the reality of the situation. If the conditions are bad, they will simply postpone the test till the next day, okay? So don't get caught up in the rhetoric of everybody else saying, oh, you can't do this, you can't pass, and those types of things. You very much can pass your driver's test in the wintertime. And the other thing is, is drive, you know, dress for the conditions of wintertime. Make sure you have a coat, you know, good boots on, and those types of things. But at the same time, make sure that you have footwear on that still allows you to control the brake and the throttle. And if you're driving a manual transmission, drive the, or the, control the clutch as well. Okay? Uh, the, the other reason that I encourage you to take your driver's test in the wintertime is because it doesn't have to be as exact. As in, the, in the summertime when you're parallel parking, you have to be 8 to 12 inches from the curb or 12 to 20 centimeters. In the, in the wintertime, you simply have to be in behind the vehicle in front of you. <laughs> you don't have to get right in because I'll tell you one thing right now. Driving examiners do not like pushing vehicles out of snow banks. <laughs> if you get stuck in a snow bank in the wintertime, they're just going to get out of the car and they're going to walk back to the office. Unfortunately, they're just, you know, it's going to be over at that time. Okay? So you don't want to get too close that you're going to get into the snow bank. As well, uh, drive a bit slower on residential streets because there's snow and ice and there's cars usually parked on both sides of the, of the roadway. Uh, you're going to be able to go a little bit slower in the wintertime on residential roads and those types of things. And the other point to keep in mind in the wintertime is know that the farther you get away from the main roads, the less maintenance there's going to be. So there's going to be snow and, more snow and ice on residential streets than there is going to be on the major roads. Okay? Ensure that your vehicle is fitted with good winter tires. Uh, make sure that you have a front wheel drive vehicle or an all wheel dr drive vehicle. I would discourage you to take a rear wheel drive vehicle on your driver's test in the winter time. There's just, you know, they just spin out all the time. You get all kinds of oversteering with them. Unless you're super confident with a rear wheel drive vehicle, I would encourage you to take a front wheel drive or an all wheel drive vehicle, even a four wheel drive vehicle for your test in the winter time. So uh, some places here in British Columbia, we can have steel studded tires in other states, Washington state, uh, Northern California, in the mountains and those types of things, you can have steel studded tires and make sure that your tires are properly inflated so that you have good traction while you're doing your driver's test. All right, ice. If you encounter ice, make sure that you get off the brake and get off the throttle and focus on steering the vehicle. And this is why so many people in the winter time get into trouble is because they get on the brakes and the vehicle starts to slide sideways and once the vehicle starts to lose control, they don't know enough, they don't have, know enough or have enough experience to get their foot off the brake and focus on steering the vehicle and looking where they want to go. Uh, and the other thing that you need to do is you need to do chop steering where you're just moving the steering wheel and bringing it back to get traction with the front wheels. So, and if you do lose traction uh, on the roadway while you're driving, try and get out of the main tracks of where the most of the traffic drives so that you can get some traction and those types of things because it's going to be diff it's going to be icy especially at intersections in the winter time so as i say again and again slow down back from where you want to stop and then creep up to where you actually want to stop so you're going to get stopped in the winter time okay uh, and make sure that you have good wipers on your vehicle you know how to turn on the windshield wipers, you know how to turn on the defrost, you know how to turn on the heat so that the examiner is comfortable, and as well, make sure that you know how to activate the windshield washer fluid if you do end up taking your test in the wintertime and it's you know slushy out and there's a lot of gunk and junk and those types of things, you're gonna have to be able to clear the windshield uh, while you're driving, okay? And drive for the conditions of the road, brake early and creep up to where you want to stop. I already mentioned that and get off the brake and get off the throttle. If you do get into conditions where you lose traction, okay, 
focus on steering the vehicle look where you want to go and get out of the main tracks and that will get you uh, get you stopped okay you got to do the work you got to do the exercises especially in the winter time so go to the parking lot get some of those 36 inch one meter tall pylons and look down in the description there and there's the checklist for the exercises you can print those off over at the smart drive test website okay understeering and oversteering and learn how the vehicle responds when you lose traction because this is a key skill in the winter time especially if you're driving on snow and ice or those types of things or you're in north dakota or minnesota or other places like that where they do in fact get a lot of snow all right so learn to drive in the winter time you're going to have a higher skill set the test is less exact in the in the winter time so i would almost argue not quite as i wouldn't say definitively but it is easier to pass the driver's test in the winter time and most of the time 80 to 90 percent of the time the roads in the winter time are going to be just fine especially the major roads where there's lots of traffic and you know sand and crews are out and those types of things so the roads are going to be bare there isn't there isn't going to be the ice or snow so you're just going to be fine there all right so we'll transition back here and we'll start answering some questions for people all right traveling i passed my class 7n yesterday in burnaby your videos helped immensely celebrated with chinese food that's awesome congratulations uh traveling photographer that you passed that's brilliant absolutely brilliant congratulations uh mikey hey man how do you know if i'm ready for the road test despite i take it in november 10th i've been told i drive as if i have my license already okay mikey have you done a practice driving test with the local driving school that's the way that you will know if you're ready for your driver's test i mean the other way to, to know is to actually take the driving test but you can take a, a, a mock road test with a driving uh, school and they'll take you out on the course they'll show you where they do the slow speed maneuvers and those types of things and it's money really well invested so that's the other thing i would encourage you to do uh brie you have your driver's test tomorrow that's awesome my friend tim here is here from uh drive smart bc uh he has a really excellent website with some really great information about laws and uh road traffic rules over there at drive smart bc so be sure to check out his website as well josephine i'm here from ohio excellence where they have the ohio maneuverability test and corey will put that video up for us as well trav i passed my driving test and i didn't celebrate it <laughs> well it's never too late make sure that you go out and do that trav that you do celebrate your driver's test because you only passed your driver's test your first driver's test once and it's not the same after that okay okay john riley i'm from uh north dakota also excellent tim is here from winnipeg mayor uh you failed your driver's test uh did they tell you why you failed your driver's test uh samson you said you failed your driver's test because you didn't give right of way where were you on the roadway samson that you didn't give the right of way okay and we'll answer that for you okay excellent excellent somebody else wanted to know about okay we don't have any of that all right and corey's put up the link for the uh, exercises there you can head over to the smart drive test website and pick up those exercises to pass okay okay thanks for that corey uh jade enough for handwriting do i have to do it with a stencil or the old-fashioned way if i get a job uh law enforcement uh jaden you pr it probably just has to be legible it doesn't have to be anything crazy okay uh cole i take my test on december 14th any tips uh cole where in the world are you taking your driver's test arun uh any additional information for class four um arun class four is a uh, small bus is it not it's like taxi small bus less than 25 passengers is that true uh just i just want to double check that before i answer your question uh brad can i have one hand on the wheel when reversing yes you can brad you can have the other hand on the back of the passenger seat that actually makes it easier for you uh because you need to be looking out the rear window when you're reversing brad okay and corey's put up the ohio maneuverability test for those of you in the state of ohio uh there in the buckeye you have to do that as part of your driver's test uh karun uh thank you for the info i watched all your videos and proved really helpful that's awesome okay uh cole okay so you have your test on the 14th in the state of minnesota uh you know you're gonna be fine just as i said just practice practice in and around the test center where you're going to be taking your test make sure that you practice 
uh, at the time that you're going to be taking your test. So for example, if your test is at 10 o'clock in the morning, make sure that you're practicing at 10 o'clock in the morning. You know, figure out where there's any, you know, like merges, for example, that you have to come up and you have to move over. Uh, make sure that you uh, figure out where the school zones are. Uh, figure out if school is actually in session, that you're going to be ready for that when you're there. Uh, figure out if there's any kind of speed zones or those types of things that are going to catch you out and whatnot. So just practice in and around the area that you can. And if you're not, dra dra and if you're not taking... Uh, <clears throat> If you're not taking driving lessons, then hire a local driving school to take you out to do a practice driving test. Okay, uh, excellent. Okay, so Arun, it's taxi, thanks for that. Yes, so taxi, basically it's your pre-trip inspection. You got 20 minutes to do your pre-trip inspection. It shouldn't take you that long to do your pre-trip inspection. And then uh, Arun, basically for your class four, uh, it's the same as for a class five driver's test, it's, you know, it's the only thing that they may not get you to do is parallel parking. They might get you to do parallel parking if it's taxi, uh, but that's, it's, it's going to be the same as a class five driver's test. And Corey will put the video up for you on the uh, mock driver's test that I do here. So just have a look at that. And uh, the pre-trip inspection that I do, there's a pre-trip inspection video here. Uh, the pre-trip inspection that you have to do for taxi is essentially the same as that. Okay. Okay, excellent. Uh, Suli, I am taking my driver's test in Ontario in December. Any tips? Yeah, all the same tips. Those are going to work for you. And have a look at the video on taking your driver's test in the winter time, and that will help you out there in Ontario. Uh, okay, Prandy, uh, I made a mistake when I see a lot of vehicles and people on the road. How I get more confident? I have a test next month in Montreal, Quebec. Uh, basically it's just more practice pandy with people and you know just slowing down and you know increasing your observation making sure that you're checking figuring out what people are doing try to uh, understand traffic patterns so that you can interpret the individual actions of each person but no for the most part it's going to be more or less predictable okay uh, Margaret, for the permit test, will there be computer terminals at the DMV that I use to take the test or do I have to space on my phone to download the test? Uh, Margaret, as far as I know, there aren't any DMVs that are doing on, uh, like online testing. As far In my understanding, it's still computer terminals at the DMVs. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. <laughs> so there you go, Jaden. Uh, Tim is a retired police officer, and Tim says police reports only need to be legible. I printed all mine because my writing is poor. So there you go. Excellent. Thanks for that, Tim. Uh, okay, uh, Bree, do you consider backup cameras usable tools during the road test for checking the tires are straightened, etc.? Uh, Bree, uh, one of the things that I two two things on that point of backup cameras. You can use a backup camera for the purposes of a driver's test. You simply can't use it as your main line of sight. So you can check it like you would your mirrors before you reverse, but just check it and then look out the rear window for your purposes of backing up. Uh, to check to make sure that your tires are straight, what I suggest is put a piece of tape on the top of the steering wheel, and that way uh, you can determine uh, if if your steering wheel is straight at a glance. You can just look and see if the tape is at the top, and that way you'll know uh, if your uh, steering wheel straight at a glance. So that's the other thing that I suggest to you. Okay, Marie, practice, practice, thank you. Yes, <laughs> I can't stress that enough. Uh, the thing about driving and the thing about learning how to drive is it's not a spectator sport. And there are so many things, you know, that some things that I can talk to you about and other things that I, you know, and it's just kind of an off the cuff thing. For example, today, I come out of the front of my house here. There's a there's a two-way stop sign here. And there's a pedestrian kind of jaywalking across the street with her dog. And I had a, a smart driver ask me this question about two-way stops and wants to make sure that it's not the first person that arrives because it's not the first person that arrives at a two-way stop. And I was thinking about this again because I've been going over this quite a bit of late that for two-way stops, it's major road over minor road, straight through vehicles over turning vehicles, and right turning vehicles over left turning vehicles. And the reason that it's like that, you, you need to understand that with traffic laws, there's, there's a balance between two things. 
The one thing is, is on the one hand, we have traffic laws, and on the other hand, we have traffic flow, the, the movement of vehicles through a city or through highways or wherever, right? So we have traffic flow on this hand and we have traffic laws on this hand. And traffic laws, for the most part, you know, we have stop signs and traffic lights and those types of things. They tend to impede traffic flow. So I pull out the front here and the woman, so as the woman's crossing the road, she's waiting for the pedestrian. I'm turning left and she waves me on to go. And I'm like, oh, well, you should have gone. But she was waiting for the pedestrian to go and the pedestrian was kind of in front of her. So she let me go first. And it's one of those one off things, right? That you have to go because the other person is waiting for the pedestrian to get off, get across the road. So, you know, and it's driving is like that. There are so many little things that may or may not happen, but it's one of those things that you have to practice. It's the same thing with dealing with yellow lights for the purposes of a driver's test. For the purposes of a driver's test, red and yellow are the same color. You have to get that vehicle stopped. And it's tough. It's, it's, it's a tough skill to learn but you have to practice, you have to go around and you, and you, you have to drive to, to, to na nail enough yellow lights <laughs> that, and, and not only nail enough yellow lights, but be close enough to the intersection to know that you need to bring the vehicle to a stop. And you can only do that by practicing and spending time and getting out there and doing that. Okay. Excellent. Brad, I got my test on the 30th. Think that's enough time to practice. Uh, parallel parking, that's really the only skill I need to master. Reverse parking as well. Uh, Brad, if you have your test on the 30th, that's like more than two weeks. I think I think you got lots of time to master parallel parking for sure. And uh, definitely, Brad, have a look at the video that I just put up last week, you know, about being a little bit aggressive and that'll help you out and whatnot. Uh, Toki, uh, does North Carolina give road tests during COVID? Uh, yes, North Carolina does, but at one and the same time, North Carolina is also moving drivers from the learner's phase to the novice phase of the GDL. So have a look into that as well there in North Carolina. All right. Uh, Ouija, should I ever look at my GPS when driving or only use voice GPS? Uh, Ouija, I would recommend that you only use voice GPS when you're driving. Don't be looking at your GPS. If you do need to look at your GPS, pull over into a safe place, into a fuel station or some other place off the side of the road or whatnot. You can get off onto a minor road and then have a look at it, figure out where you need to go and then get back on the road and go from there. Okay, uh, Arun, best video for passing road tests from Smart Drive, how to pass a driver's license test. Excellent, thank you for that, Arun. That's great. Uh, Katie, is it normal to be nervous backing up? I'm worried because I lost my best friend getting in a blind spot. Uh, Katie, yes, it's totally nervous. Uh, totally nervous. <laughs> no, it's totally normal to be nervous uh, when you're backing up. And Katie, it's just a matter of practice and you'll gain more confidence as you're backing up. One of the things that I would suggest to you, Katie, is going and finding some place where you can back up in a straight line, like an alley or something like that. And that will really help you out with boosting your confidence and those types of things. But again, it's just exposure. It's just doing it and practicing it and you'll be more comfortable. And again, make sure that you're you know, doing your 360 degree scans, every vehicle length as you're backing up, you're doing your scans. And uh, that way you'll be able, be able to know what's in your surroundings and whatnot. Okay. Uh, Riffy, uh, hello, sir. How are you? Big fan from USA. Much respect. Appreciated for all the info regarding driving. Uh, you're most welcome. And thank you for being part of the smart driver community. That's really, really awesome. Dion, uh, how are the, how are they doing the tests in South Boston VA center? Uh, Dion, my understanding is, is that they're using state vehicles in Massachusetts and that you're going to be using one of their vehicles. And I think they're doing that because uh, just cleanliness and they can control how the vehicles are cleaned and those types of things. So that's my understanding. I'm not sure whether that's across the state, but if you get different information, please come back and tell me and I'll update the information that I have about that. That would be really awesome. 
Okay, uh, Vicky, I watched your videos to learn passing, and so I learned a lot, and I passed yesterday in North Vancouver. So happy. Thanks for your videos. Uh, Vicky, that's absolutely awesome that you passed your driver's test yesterday. Uh, what did you do to celebrate? Yeah, because make sure you celebrate, okay? All the smart drivers out there who are taking a driver's test or getting ready for a driver's test, make sure that you celebrate, okay? Because you never get a second chance. You're never going to pass your first driver's test again. It'll never be the same again. And trust me, I know because I've taken lots of driver's tests after that, okay? Uh, Pathfinder, click like now. I'm late. I'm going to uh, watch this later. Hello, everyone. Uh, Katie, how do you get comfortable using the side mirrors? Uh, Katie, it's just a matter of practice. The other thing I would suggest, Katie, you know, backing up in a straight line is to get some of those 36-inch, one-meter tall pylons and just go down to a parking lot and set them up in a line and then back up just using the mirror on the driver's side and then go over to the passenger side and back up on the passenger side as well. And that will help you out with... Uh, backing up backing up with the mirrors and you know getting comfortable with reversing and those types of things and if you know it might help as well Katie that uh, get somebody to go with you somebody who's a veteran driver who can just give you some counsel and give you some tips and suggestions uh, when you're taking your driver when you're backing up and reversing and those types of things okay okay uh, Sergey uh, should I use my instructor's car for the test uh, Sergey, it depends. Uh, if you've got a big vehicle, then yeah, I might suggest you doing it. But it's 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 about how comfortable you are. Uh, if you've done all your training in the driving instructor's car, then I might suggest you take the driving instructor's car as opposed to taking your own vehicle. It's 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 about your own comfort of what what you are the most comfortable with. Josephine, does Ohio give road tests during COVID? Josephine, yes, they do and uh, have a look at the Ohio maneuverability test video as well. Have a look at the uh, closed circuit testing uh, during COVID and that will give you the information you need for taking your driver's test there. Uh, Jaden, hey, I'm saving up my money to get myself a car. I will send you all the pictures on the group chat after the stream. That's awesome. I look forward to that, Jaden. That's exciting news. Uh, Carmela, I got my driver's license last year but didn't practice driving because I don't have a car. Where can I go to get the feeling of uh, road and practice. So Carmela, basically if you haven't driven in a year and you haven't been driving a car, basically what I would suggest, just go down to the, the parking lot, you know, drive around in circles a little bit until you get used to the car. Uh, maybe take somebody with you who is a driver already. They can give you some, you know, some counsel and some feedback when you're driving around and those types of things. And then, you know, just go for a drive and start in uh, low density residential areas where there isn't much traffic around. And then as you get more comfortable, move out into major roads and those types of things. And that will really uh, help you out and boost your confidence, right? As you get more comfortable, then move out into major intersections and those types of things, okay? It's, it's really busy right now. <laughs> There's lots of people on the, on the live stream. There's more than 100 people here, which is really awesome. So uh, just uh, if I don't get to your question, uh, leave a comment down in the comment section after the video or send me an email, rick at Smart Drive Test, and I'll help you out the best I can uh, with answering your questions and those types of things, okay? Catherine, I am awesome. How are you, my friend? Uh, I just drove from 100 Mile House, and now I'm in hope heading back to North Vancouver. That is awesome, Catherine. Brilliant. Uh, I really like hope. I, sp I spend quite a bit of time there when I go to Vancouver and whatnot. It's always kind of our, our stopping place. Uh, driving about 1,200 kilometers over two days. Yeah, that's really great. That's a great trip. Okay, and Dion, my test. Any final thoughts? Uh, your test is tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Okay, <laughs> you're gonna do awesome. Yes, 111 people. That is really great for a live stream here. So, um, okay, okay, where'd you go? Okay, I missed it. I was I was looking for it. Okay, Them, I passed about three years ago thanks to you, but I'm starting to forget everything because I live in New York City. And I have a need for a car right now. So you're getting back to driving. That's really awesome. Mohammed, any our instructors easygoing when conducting tests in winter. Mohammed, for the most part, they are. Uh, you know, it's kind of a myth 
<laughs> that driving examiners are ogres. Driving examiners are not ogres. Most driving examiners are very nice people and they're not gonna do anything to freak you out because they know that you your skill level when you're taking a driving test is not high. So they're, uh, they're you know, going to do everything they can to make you comfortable for your driver's test because they already know you're stressed out. So, you know, and I, I can't say that not all, there might be one or 2%, but for the most part, you're gonna get a good driving examiner that's gonna help you do your test. So it's gonna be fine, okay? It's gonna be great. Uh, and Dion, you're taking your driver's test tomorrow. Okay, all driving tests have four major components. Space management, speed management, observation, and communication. You can be broken down into those four categories. Space management, don't get near anything, don't get near any other road users, and you'll be fine, okay? So following distance is two to three seconds minimum. Uh, stopping at controlled intersections, stop before the stop line, stop before the crosswalk or sidewalk, and if those two conditions don't exist, then stop at the edge where the two roads meet. So in other words, stop just before you enter the intersection. Stopping in traffic, stop back so you can see the tires of the vehicle in front of you making clear contact with the pavement. When you're stopped at complex intersections waiting to make a left-hand turn, stop with the front steer tires on the front crosswalk line. When you see the gap coming and, and you see it, then move forward and meet the gap and that way you've got a bit of uh, speed up when you're making your left-hand turn. So that's space management. Speed management. The Flow of, or the flow of traffic or the posted speed limit, whichever is less, okay? And remember that space management is more important than speed, okay? But as well, if you make a turn out onto a major roadway uh, for speed, don't dawdle. Get it up to speed as quickly as possible. So if you get on the throttle, get it up to 30 miles an hour, or get it up to 25 miles an hour if you're in New York City, or 50 kilometers an hour for those of us who live in Canada and other places in the world. All right, so... Communication, you have to communicate effectively with other traffic. And the five ways we communicate with other traffic, lights and signals, horn, use your horn sparingly because it's seen as a sign of aggression in this day and age, eye contact with other road users, cyclists and pedestrians and whatnot, and uh, hand gestures, all five fingers. Never tell somebody that they're number one, especially on a driver's test. And the last, the most important way that we communicate with other traffic on the roadway is the position of the vehicle on the roadway is going to communicate to other traffic your intention. So for example, if there's a vehicle in the left turning lane, it's there's a high probability that that vehicle is going to turn left. All right, so that's observation. And the last one is, or sorry, that was communication. The last one is observation. So observation, you must do two shoulder checks minimum for every time you turn the vehicle, you turn the vehicle or you move the vehicle sideways, you move the vehicle laterally, minimum two shoulder checks. All right, 360 degree scan before you're backing up and when you're backing up, you must look out the rear window. You can't use a backup camera. There is a video here on backup cameras and Corey will put that up for us. So have a look for that as well. Observation, okay. Lane changes, same thing. Two lane changes, and before you execute any action, make sure that you have minimum three flashes on the signal, okay? So one signal, two signal, three signal, or signal, or mere signal shoulder checking, and three flashes, then we can start to move over if the way is clear. So that is observation. Finally, you have to have a scanning pattern in place which repeats itself every eight to 12 seconds as you're looking forward down the road that scanning pattern down the road in checking your center mirror, down the road in check your instrument panel, down the road check your wing mirror, your left wing mirror, far down the road both shoulders, check your right wing mirror and then repeat that. Your scanning pattern is tied in with speed control because if you don't have speed control, you can go above or below the speed limit, but if you're not adjusting your speed within a few seconds, that tells the examiner that you don't have your observation in place. You don't have your scanning pattern in place because you're not adjusting your speed every eight to 12 seconds. So that's what you should be doing for the purposes of a driver's test. All right, Mohammed, thank you so much for that. That's awesome. Uh, Dazzle, I am a fan. I love watching your videos. Uh, watch from Edmonton, thanks for the info. You're most welcome. Kumar, uh, your videos are very informative. I always watch your videos for new tips before going for my actual driving practice. Excellent, so glad we can help out. 
Kaylee, you got into a crash. Uh, what happened? Everybody was okay? That's always what I'm worried about is everybody's okay. Okay, dinner time. Thanks, Tim. We'll see you next week. All the best. Have a great week. Uh, Jordan, I go, I go for my class seven road test Tuesday. Really excited. I've been watching all your videos. That's awesome. Uh, Sammy, my test is Monday the 16th. Do you have any tips? Usually the biggest issue I have is that I don't think while I drive and sort of zone off. Okay, Sammy, you kind of need to hold it together for the 20 minutes while you're driving for your driver's test. Uh, and so that's all you need to do. Okay. Uh, how long is the driver's test in Ontario? The driver's test in Ontario varies a little bit, but it can any be anywhere from sort of 15 to 30 minutes there in Ontario. Uh, Joseph, which insurance company is the best? Uh, Joseph, are you a young driver? For example, are you, uh, are you insuring the car under your name or are you putting the car in your parents' name and then they're going to insure the car? These, these are questions that you kind of need to answer. Okay. Um, Cole, is the road test shortened for Minnesota? Uh, Cole, yes, the uh, driver's test is shortened for Minnesota. Actually, Cole, driver's test, and this is for the entire smart driver community, the driver's tests are all going to be shortened, okay? All right. Isaac, uh, good evening, sir. I passed the 7N license in BC with an automatic transmission car. Do you recommend me to take another a uh, couple of lessons to learn to drive stick shift. Uh, Isaac, if you have access to a, a manual transmission, you can simply watch the videos here on the Smart Drive Test channel. There's a whole series on driving a manual car and Corey will put those up for you and those will teach you how to drive a manual car. If you've got somebody, if you've already got your license and you can already get the car down to a parking lot, which is where I suggest that you start learning how to drive a manual car, you can, you can certainly do it from the videos there, okay? Uh, a tech, uh, were you asked to make this account to teach people or did you just genuinely want to help people? <laughs> a tech, that's, that's a great question. I'm a, that's kind of off what I normally am asked. Uh, no, I genuinely want to help people. And, uh, you know, and just, just on that note, a tech, uh, I, I don't care. You know, it's a little bit like a PhD, okay? When I did my PhD, it's a little bit like this. Somebody said to me once, they said, make sure that you're absolutely passionate about what you do because your friends and family will listen to you the first couple of months. Uh, your colleagues will listen to you for another three months and then after that, you're on your own. And it's, this, it's the same thing with a YouTube channel. If you have to be absolutely passionate about what you do because, I mean, I've been doing this for five years now. And I mean, I did, don't get me wrong. I did go through a period of time with the YouTube channel where it kind of went down, but, uh, you know, I genuinely want to help people and I genuinely want to help people pass the driver's test. And, you know, in the spring of this year in 2020 during COVID, I, I kind of said to myself, I had a little talk with myself and I said, this is important. I help people. I really do help people. And this is important what I'm doing. So this is, this is what we do. We, we, we help people pass their driver's test because there's, there's no greater feeling than passing your driver's test and having that sense of empowerment, having that driver's license and you can get in a car and drive yourself around. I think that's just awesome. Pathfinder, 135 people. <laughs> that's just blowing my mind. That is absolutely incredible. And we are, I mean, that's the great thing now. It's like, you know, and remember that about life. One of the sayings about life, the grass is not greener on the other side of the fence. The grass is greener where we water it. And this, this whole YouTube channel and smart drive test and what ATEC just asked me, uh, as soon as I started watering the grass and smart drive test, this all took off. And in the last two or three weeks, we've been at over a hundred people on the live stream, which is just absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, okay. Uh, Akuma, thanks for your time to make the videos you have. I passed, uh, owe you some lunch. <laughs> Akuma, that's awesome. Thank you so much, my friend. Make sure that you go out and celebrate. Go out with your BFF and have a lunch or have one of those really tasty drinks that you like. That's really awesome. Okay. Dion, you're definitely going to pass. You're going to do awesome. Okay. And thank you for your kind words. That's really, really awesome. Okay. Uh, Arun, I got enough information from you and your channel. Uh, God bless you and your family. Stay safe from COVID. And thank you, my friend. Uh, Sean, my G2 is on the 18th. Any advice for me? Uh, yep, Sean, you're going to do great. Uh, so G2. 
Uh, okay, yes. So, you know, same thing. Uh, just wind back in the video here, Sean, and look through the four things that you're going to need to have in place. The space management, speed management, observation, communication. And watch the video here on... Uh, Corey will put it up for you, pass your driver's test in the winter time, and that will really help you out. And again, if you have any questions or um, you know concerns, uh, drop me an email, send, put a comment down in the comment section there, and we'll definitely help you out. Okay. Uh, Jaden, my dream car was the Knight <laughs> Industries 2000 from the TV show Knight Rider, but when I called the dealership, they said it was 15 or 50K. <laughs> yeah, not cheap at all, Jaden. Uh, Tarwali, how to prepare your car before the driving test? Yes, uh, Tarwali, Corey will put up the pre-trip inspection video for you uh, and go over to the Smart Drive Test website and download the checklist and that way you'll know for sure that uh, your car is uh, tip-top ready for the driver's test. <laughs> Thank you, Pathfinder, that's awesome. ATEC, that's amazing, I've been watching since I was 15, I'm 17. And I've been driving since I was young, and it's nice to have a teacher that loves what they do. <laughs> Thank you so much, ATAC, for those kind words. That's that's really awesome. Really awesome. Margaret, your videos and live streams are so helpful. I failed my driver's test as a teenager and have not tried again for over 30 years. Could not do this without you. And I am really, really happy, Margaret, that we can help you out. You're gonna you're gonna do absolutely awesome. My friend Colin, uh, quick question uh, along with YouTube. How did you get your channel to grow? I had a channel for a couple of months and I can't seem to make it grow. I uh, won't plug my channel. I'm not <laughs> No, I appreciate that, Colin. But uh, Colin, it takes, it takes longer than a couple of months. And, uh, you know, Colin, I think we just hit 150 people, which is just blows my mind. 150 people on the live stream. Colin, the, the way that I got my channel to grow was just being consistent. Uh, basically, it was crickets for the first nine months of my channel. Uh, it didn't happen. And I can remember in 2016, when I was making videos, I was doing two videos a week. I was haranguing people to get 100 subscribers on my birthday in May. And I kept making two videos a week. And I got to September. And for those of you who may or may not know, YouTube is not about subscribers. YouTube is about watch time, how much time you people watch your videos. And I kept watching the watch time on my videos. And then uh, in September, I got two minutes of watch time for every minute of the day. So I got two days of watch time. And I was like, okay, this thing is finally on. YouTube has finally paid attention to me. And so for the next four months, I made a video six every day, six days a week, which I would not recommend. <laughs> I would just recommend being consistent. Two couple of videos a week and you'll be just fine. But you need to know that building a YouTube channel is no different than building a bricks and mortar store. It's, it takes time, it takes commitment, and it takes consistency. And it's, it's the consistency that's the biggest thing with building a YouTube channel. It takes a lot of time. It's not something you're going to do in a couple of days, a couple of weeks. And I mean, we all hear about these kids, the kid with the toy who just made a YouTube channel and he's making millions and millions of dollars. Those are the one-off things, okay? If you want to be, you, you got to know that it's it's hard work and it's a lot of time to build a YouTube channel, okay? <clears throat> Excellent. Okay, Princess, hello. I will be going for a driving adult class at 1 p.m. tomorrow. I just have a hard time looking over my shoulder, but I... Uh, do I need to shoulder check when turning lanes? Yes, you do. Uh, so princess, anytime that you turn the vehicle sideways, anytime that you're turning, you need to shoulder check. And probably what's happening is you're not doing it quick enough. It's just a quick turn. It's just like this. It's really quick. Okay. So try that and see if that works out for you. Okay. Uh, uh, Kim, I, uh, hello, Rick. Do you know how to tell if a traffic light has arrow signals? It's always a little tricky for me to know which intersections have protected turns. Uh, yeah, protected turns. Usually what happens is, is that there's another traffic light at the bottom or there's a traffic light right in the center of the intersection on the other side. And most intersections, most complex intersections that have an advanced green or a protected left-hand turn are going to have a turning lane, a left-hand turning lane. So if they have a, a left-hand turning lane, most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time, they're going to have a protected uh, left-hand turn or an advanced green. So that's how you know. The other thing to do, and I would counsel 
all smart drivers to do this is to make sure that you drive in and around the area where you're going to be taking your test at the test center so that you know these things whether there's an advanced green or not or whatnot okay uh priceless it also helps that your content is very good and useful uh thank you priceless <laughs> yeah you're you're absolutely right it, it has to be you know there's there's three major uh categories on youtube there's uh reviews entertainment or how-to stuff and mine very much falls into the how-to stuff so you need to have you need to be falling into one of those categories right and you know it's it's consistency and practice too like <laughs> some of my old videos are pretty hard to watch now but anyway excellent uh sate how should i prepare and adjust myself before entering a playground zone uh, say one of the things you want to know about playground zones is you want to make sure that they don't have a speed sign attached to them. Some of them do, uh, and they will have, uh, the 30 kilometers an hour or, or, or 20 miles an hour underneath that. So be very careful of those as well and know where those are in and around your test center. Okay. Alexander, I passed my driving test on Wednesday because of you. You're genuinely such a great teacher. Much respect. Alexander, you're so awesome. You're so welcome. And that's really great that you came back and told us that you passed. That's that's really brilliant. Awesome. Uh, Princess, you're most welcome. Uh, Wiener, I'm in the process of obtaining my motorcycle permit in Quebec. Any tips on staying calm on the closed track test? Uh, yes. So Wiener, just make sure that you breathe, you know, visualize the wind and you're going to be great. So make sure that you, and you've already probably done all the practice that you need to do to be able to do the test on the closed circuit test. So, and you know, uh, you know, don't get going too slow. And if you get to a point where you're, you feel your balances are off or something like that, then just stop, put your leg down, get your balance again, and then proceed again, okay? Don't try to plow through if you've lost your balance on the bike and, you know, you're trying to get going forward, uh, you know, regain your balance. So stop the bike, get your balance, get it going again, and then proceed again after that, okay? Excellent. Caroline, uh, please, if your car is a big, how do you do reverse parking? Uh, Caroline, Corey will put up the video for you on uh, parallel parking with a larger vehicle and that'll help you out with that. Okay. Uh, Akamai. Uh, okay. Thank you, Rick. I didn't know uh, that about dedicated turn lanes and arrow signals. Excellent. So I'm glad we could help out with that. And Corey's put up the, vi the video on shoulder checking. So that'll help you out. Arun, bless you. Thank you so much. Uh, Brad, how fast do you drive in playground zones in Ontario? Uh, one of the things you want to figure out, Brad, is you want to figure out the playground zone in and around the test center where you're going to be taking your test and figure out whether if there is a speed sign, right? Because if there is a speed sign, then you're going to have to slow down to that speed. We have a lot of them here in British Columbia and it's 30 kilometers an hour. They may have them in some of the states as well, that they're 20 miles an hour in a playground uh, area. And also, this is the other thing, okay? So this is the difference between school zones and playground speed zones. School zones are only in effect from 8 o'clock in the morning until 5 p.m. at night. Playground zone signs are in effect from sunup to sundown. So when the sun comes up in the morning until the sun goes down at night, that playground speed sign uh, zone is in effect. So, and as well... We had one when I was training in Kamloops and they used to take the class three drivers down there and they would get caught out. So know where these are because this is, can be kind of the fly in the ointment that will get you caught out on a driver's test and it is an automatic fail to speed both in a school zone or to speed in a playground zone area. So know that for the purposes of your driver's test uh, that you need to know where these are. So make sure you figure that out and either go and drive around uh, the test center out 10 or 15 minutes in a kind of a concentric circle around not a concentric circle but a circle around the test center and that way you can know where these are the other thing to do is to spend a little bit of money and hire a local driving school and go out and do a mock road test and they will take you out and they will point out all these areas where you need to be careful for the purposes of your driver's test okay 
Uh, Brad, if there's no speed posted with the playground zone, it's 40 kilometers an hour then, just be cautious. Uh, no, Brad, it's not 40 kilometers an hour. If, if it's just a cautionary playground sign with no speed underneath it, then it's still 50 kilometers an hour. Uh, there isn't a reduced speed for those, okay? So know that. Lamar, I'm 14 years old. I can do the test at 16. Is there any tips you can give me? I'm in the U.S. Yes, so Lamar, excellent. You're getting prepared for this. So basically what you need to do, Lamar, is you need to start doing practice driving test questions on the Internet. And uh, Corey will put up the video for you on uh, how to pass your learner's test. And you just basically go on and start doing the practice driving test questions. And anything you don't know, do the practice driving test questions as a measure of your knowledge. So in other words, where you are on, you know, in terms of your ability to know what to do for the learner's test. And then after you do those and say, for example, you're getting 60%, the questions you got wrong, then go back, look at the driver's manual, read the sections you got wrong, and then go back and start practicing your tests again. And you have lots of time <laughs> to practice for your learner's permit. So uh, just practice that and in a couple of years you'll be ready and you get your learners and then you can carry on. So it'll be really great. Okay. Uh, epic. Very nice uh, tips, Rick. And if your road test is in a closed course uh, motor vehicle commission agency that operates a closed course, uh, clean if there is snow in the facility or cancel it. Uh, it depends. Epic. It's kind of a discretionary call on the part of the manager of the driving test center uh, he or she will make the call as to as to whether they're going to uh, postpone all the driving tests or whether they're going to push forward and it's it's also you know kind of with COVID and those types of things it's going to depend on whether uh, they can get crews out to keep the uh, the parking lot or the closed circuit area clean uh, for the purposes of your driver's tests and those types of things okay uh, Pandy, how do you get more control on acceleration? I always worried about speed control while driving on the Montreal roads. Uh, speed limit signs change very frequently. And again, you know, Pandy, this is uh, another one of those things that is just simply practice. Uh, the other indicator is, is that traffic flow will give you an indication of this. But if you're practicing for your driver's test, as we all know in the smart driver community, you have to drive the posted speed limit. So it's, it becomes even more important to get more practice because you're going to have to kind of resist going with the traffic flow because we, you know, most drivers on the roadway are just going to drive with the traffic flow and you can't do that for the purposes of your driver's test. And again, as I said, draw a circle around where your test center is on a map and know that 10 to 12 minutes out and 10 to 12 minutes back. So your test is only going to be kind of 15 to 20 minutes, right? Total. And then you're going to know you can kind of you can you can do a lot of this on Google Maps. You don't even need to go out and drive around. You can just pull up the map on Google Maps, have a look at it. Okay, there's the test center. There's 12 minutes out. Okay, there's a school there. There's a church there. There's a playground there. And you can you could spend an hour on Google Maps and you could figure out where all the schools and those types of things are. And then you have it on a map. You print it out and then you go out and drive around and you can look for these places. And then you can know exactly where they are and what you need to do for the purposes of practicing for your driver's test. Okay. Uh, Don, Don Quixote, uh, how much hours of practice would it take for someone to master everything? <laughs> uh, Don Quixote, I'm chuckling, I'm sorry. Because, you know, even at my level of driving, I still feel like I'm learning stuff when I'm driving and teaching people how to drive. But uh, master everything. Are you, so let me just ask you a question. Are you getting ready to pass a driver's test? Are you preparing for a driver's test? Is that what you're doing? Okay, Austin, uh, what speed do you go if you don't know the speed limit and don't see a posted speed limit sign anywhere? Great question, Austin. So inside the city, it's 50 kilometers an hour or 30 miles an hour. And outside the city, it's going to be 50 miles an hour or 80 kilometers an hour. Now, some places are a little bit different. New York City, for example, is 25 miles an hour in the city and it's a maximum of 55 miles an hour outside of the city. So it's within that area, but just look it up in your handbook, but there is going to be a, a maximum speed limit that you're allowed to do within the city and outside of the city. And most of the time that's going to be 30 miles an hour in the city, 50 miles an hour outside of the city or 30, or, sorry, 30 miles an hour in the city, 50 miles an hour outside the city 
or 50 kilometers an hour, 80 kilometers an hour. Okay, excellent. Okay, so Don Quixote. So yes, sir. So if you're you already got your learners Don Quixote and you're learning how to practice how to drive and pass a driver's test, if you start kind of six to eight weeks out, maybe even four weeks, if you're really comfortable with driving and you it you take it on really quickly, uh, you know, I always say kind of six to eight weeks, then you'll be great. Okay, Brad. Let's say I drive five to ten kilometers an hour with the speed limit, but catch myself relatively quickly. Uh, will they fail me? Cost me points. Okay, so Brad, again, what I said before is, is that your speed control is directly related to your scanning pattern. So every 8 to 12 seconds, you should be looking at your instrument panel, and every 8 to 12 seconds, you should be adjusting your speed. So if you go 5 kilometers an hour, 10 kilometers an hour over the speed limit, as long as you're adjusting that, yes, they will... Uh, you know, assign you some ports, points, especially if you go 10 kilometers an hour over, that's a little bit too much. But if you're five kilometers an hour and then you're like, oh, okay, and I adjusted it, then you're going to be fine. They may give you a point or two, but remember, the driver's test is not about being perfect. The driving test is about passing. That's all you want at the end. You All you want is that instructor, or not instructor, all you want is the driving examiner saying to you, you passed, okay? We can work on perfection after you get your license, okay? So that's what you need to do. Okay, excellent. All right, perfect. Okay, Horib, uh, how can I adjust my side mirrors on my dad's Hyundai Santa Fe? I use the small car to practice for my test, but when I am driving uh, my dad's SUV, it's hard to adjust the side mirrors because the car is high. Okay, uh, Horib, Corey will put the video up for you on uh, nine tips to set up the vehicle for you. Now, Horib is, are they power mirrors on the vehicle there, or are they manual? Just let me know that. Okay, Austin, uh, okay, we already answered that question. Epic, uh, it also depends on the state or province you're located here in the United States, for example. The state of New Jersey playground speed limits is either 25 or 50 miles an hour. Yes, okay, and, there, and, if, and if there is a reduced speed, they are gonna have that small regulatory sign underneath the playground sign. So that's the only time that you have a reduced speed limit uh, for the purposes of a playground. Otherwise, it's that you don't have to slow down. If it's just a playground sign with no speed, you don't have to slow down, okay? Know that for the purposes of your driver's test. All right, excellent. Oh, Jorge, they're auto. Okay, I hadn't heard about that before. Wow, that's weird. Um, maybe what you can do, Jorge, send me an email and I can look it up on online here and see if I can find something for you that will help you out with, with adjusting the mirrors on the vehicle. Cause I haven't, I haven't heard about automatic mirrors on a car before. So that, that seems a little bit strange for me. Okay. Uh, Epic, uh, Rick, highest speed limit with New York city, 80 kilometers per hour, 50 miles per hour on expressways and parkways outside. If you enter, uh, Westchester and Nassau counties, uh, then it's 90 kilometers an hour, 55 miles an hour. Okay, so it's even down to some of the counties uh, there in the U.S. and whatnot in some of the states. Okay, uh, Jordan, I went 10 miles an hour over for about two seconds before I realized I passed the playground and it was an instant fail. Yeah, and that's unfortunate, Jordan. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, yeah, if you were 10 kilometers an hour over in a playground zone, yeah, it's going to be an automatic fail. So this is one of the reasons why I really strongly suggest to you figure out where the playground zone signs are and figure out where the school zone signs are. Okay. Uh, Joanna, I'm having trouble with my head shoulder checking and my speeds. Uh, one of the things, Joanna, that I would suggest that you do is to practice when you're not driving. So just sit in the car and just turn your head 90 degrees. Okay. Just practice that. One of the for many students, when they're learning how to uh, shoulder check and they're having trouble with that, oftentimes they're doing it too slow or they're looking too far. They're trying to look out the back window and you don't. You simply need to turn your head 90 degrees. Okay. Okay, Jorge, I mean, they are not manual. Okay. <laughs> Brad, that is definitely a new record of 156 people on the on the live stream. That is, that is just... Absolutely awesome. Really, really awesome. 
Okay, Arun, uh, what's very important to keep in mind while driving in Canada? Because I drive 10 years in Dubai, but still I fail the first time for my class five, but I pass the second time. Okay, uh, Arun, I think you're gonna do fine. Just know, yes, you have previous driving experience and it's, it's, it's tough, right? Because you come from another country, you're here, there's a lot of things going on. You're dealing with all of the changes in culture and those types of things. And you're, you've, you come from Dubai and it's, you're going to, you're going to do great. Okay. Just go and do your driver's test. And, uh, you know, it, it's not a reflection of you know that for sh for sure that it's not a reflection of you. Okay. So you're going to do just fine on your driver's test. All right. So visualize the win, visualize the win. Okay. Don Quixote shoulder checking is my enemy. And yes, it's just a matter of practicing Don Quixote and definitely have a look at the video there and that will uh, help you out with uh, shoulder checking as well. Yeah, Pathfinder, 180. How crazy is that? That is absolutely crazy. Uh, Pathfinder, my truck service engine light is lighting. Do I need to go to my mechanic immediately or can I wait for a week on my day off? I've been busy lately. Thanks again, Rick. Uh, service engine, if Pathfinder, if there isn't anything going on with your vehicle, if it's not running rough or those types of things, oftentimes a check engine light, it can be all kinds of things. Uh, it's difficult until you actually plug your vehicle into a computer to know what's going on with it. Uh, I know a couple of years ago, uh, I had the check engine light on my vehicle and, uh, it was the catalytic converter on it. The sensor had gone on the catalytic converter. <laughs> I ended up changing the exhaust on it anyway, but uh, that was there and uh, <clears throat> so that's what it was uh, but just check all your fluids and those types of things in the vehicle and make sure everything's okay and if it's not running rough then yeah you could probably wait a week and take it in and get it uh, serviced at that point Can we talk on the live stream? Uh, Margaret they have something called neighborhood slow zones in New York City where the speed limit is 20 miles an hour uh, IX, I just got here, but it's actually easier to pass during the winter. <laughs> yes, it is. And that was what the purpose of the, of the, the live stream was, uh, Brad, new record, 30 more minutes of streaming. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm sure you're tired. Uh, yes. Epic, uh, really look like the tips here for everyone regarding road tests done in a combination of closed and open road in the winter time provided snow on the ground. Just keep with the test or canceled. Excellent. Uh, Oh, okay, Epic, I don't understand that question. Maybe send me an email and we can we can work on that, okay? Okay, uh, Rune, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Medina, I have my driver's test this Tuesday at 3.30. I'm nervous because it's rush hour. I don't know if I should rebook or not. Uh, Medina, when they have driver's tests with uh, that are do done during um, rush hour, they're not going to take you on to streets where you're going to get a lot of traffic. So don't postpone it. Go and do it. Okay, because the test will be shorter. They won't take you out as far. They know that. So the examiner knows how to handle that. So go and do it. Okay, because you're going to pass. Okay, go and do your driver's test. Uh, Ibram, sorry, I missed the part where I asked you how to prepare your car for the driving test. Uh, Tarwali, Corey will put up the pre-trip inspection video for you. Have a look at that and head over to the Smart Drive Test website and pick up the checklist for that. And we'll leave it here for tonight. Congratulations to all the smart drivers that have passed in the last couple of weeks. That's really awesome that you got your license. Make sure that you celebrate. And for all the drivers taking a test this week and the coming week, good luck on that. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great day. Bye now. Bye now. I like your socks. <laughs> Bye.